A happy group of hockey players would take the ice for practice, anticipating the road trip to Wisconsin. Goalie Eamon McAdam was slated to start in both games for the first time this year. March comes in like a lion and you'll get no argument from these lions. An injury to freshman Vince Pedri would add another to the pile of banged up Penn Staters. Junior forward Dylan Richard has not taken the ice since January. James Robinson is already not playing due to surgery and Mike Williamson retired in midseason. Our Lions are small in numbers. In addition to roster concerns, this weekend would have a number of implications and not just for the Big Ten tournament, but the national rankings as well, with the Lions nestled as a bubble team for the upcoming NCAA tournament. Their performance in Madison could solidify their spot in the conference tournament and national rankings or leave them wiggle room to climb. This is a story about a game like no other. Power and speed, violence and grace. In a home like no other, the greatest student section in all of college hockey. This is our story. The Penn State Hockey Story. You're watching the Penn State Hockey Story! You're watching the Penn State Hockey Story! You're watching the Penn State Hockey Story! After a weekend off, the Penn State hockey team ranked 14th nationally is back in action tonight at Kohl Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Penn State 19-9-4 overall, 9-6-1-1, 29 points, third place in the Big Ten. Brian Tripp and Tim King here with you tonight. And Tim, Penn State has beaten Wisconsin six straight games, swept the Badgers here last year. It's safe to say that the final four remaining regular season games are the biggest in program history as Penn State tries to get into the NCAA tournament for the first time. We're going to fly. We are coming out flying with our Penn State hockey habits, okay? Just so happens, Vince Pedri leads our team in shots, just below four a game. So we can either go, okay, well, we're going to try just get four less, or we can every guy go, you know what? We don't have to, you don't have to make up four, but you got to make up one. He makes up one, he makes up one, we're going to be a hell of a lot better off, right? So let's get hungry to get shots, hungry gets in that, we do that, we're all going to be a better team, okay? So come out flying, prepare to come out flying, and you should, you had a week off, and make sure we're ready to do it consistent all night long. Okay, boys? Yep. All right. Chase, your line starts. Turns to you and Luke. Eamon, you got it. Coming into this game, the Nittany Lions had defeated the Badgers six straight times. While they looked for number seven, Wisconsin hoped to break the streak in a game that was bound to be physical. to go in the first. Penn State struck first, only to feel the sting of the Badgers' teeth just moments later. And there's a goal! This time the Badgers do score! Luke Conan with goal number 16 on the season, and the freshmen have been able to get 
the job done. Top of the far circle, pass back to the near side, cut and fire, kick save, McAdam sliding left to right. Cutting far circle, Bessie finds, Hughes back to cut and fires, McAdam sprawls out, cut and good and ram it in. In the first of this two game weekend, Eamon McAdam was brilliant, robbing the Badgers of a late go ahead goal in the first period. Look, we need a bit of a more urgency here to get to the net. Yes, we're shooting some pucks, but we got to get second and third chances. So let's get them going, boys. Hey, consistency in our habits all the time, but we got to get a little hunger and a little meaner. Let's do it. A little bit of luck would keep the score locked until senior Tommy Olchuk set sights on his 10th goal of the campaign. Backhand shovels it into the net, he scores! Olchek delaying in front, took his time and found the right spot to bury the biscuit. And the game is over. Penn State survives on the road and wins 2-1 to one at Wisconsin tonight. So you're watching the Tommy Olchek Show. through the 19th, the Excel Energy Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. Shoot, scores! The 2016 Big Ten Men's Ice Hockey Tournament. A game-changing save! Six teams. There's an opening. He scores! One champion. Be a part of it all. Are you kidding me? Ticket packages are available now at the Excel Energy Center box office or at Ticketmaster.com. Eric Scheid, number 23, redshirt senior. Breakaway in, left to right, Deke Stutes, SCORE! Eric Scheid! Uh, I was a rink rat, for sure. Eric started skating, I would say, at a very young age, as most Minnesota kids do here. He's also very uh, competitive and can get a little hot-headed at times, and he doesn't like to lose. <laughs> I, was, I was the kid on the ice rink that was helicoptering sticks at his brothers, you know. My parents were a really big help for me growing up. You know, my dad would uh, flood the ice rink down behind our house every winter that's so that me and my, uh, my brothers and all the other neighborhood kids could skate every winter. They were there the whole time. You know, we, we made several 24-hour you know, drives out to Edmonton, Calgary, Montreal, I mean. You know, and the kids always complained about they never got to go to Disney World, but I, I always reminded them, well, you got to go to Canada <laughs> instead. They've been with me the whole way on the ride, and. Uh, they're just so supportive of everything I do and you know I'm just uh, incredibly thankful to have such a such a caring and loving family to take care of me and uh, I honestly owe, owe all my success to them. I played JV as a sophomore, uh, junior year, I did a decent junior year and uh, senior year I, I wasn't even really sure if you know what junior league I'd be able to play and I wasn't sure if I'd make the NHL or USHL and then I got a call from uh, a coach from Union College and uh, that was a pretty big eye opener that, I, that teams were interested in me. I think it was that moment when I realized that if I work hard I actually have a chance to do something special that not a lot of kids get the opportunity to do. He always was a very skilled player, even at a young age. I mean, I would say he definitely stood out. Definitely when he got into high school, you know, we were optimistic that something would happen for him. Uh, speed to burn, shy is fun to watch. He sort of plays at a different speed than any, everybody else. Um, he's a great guy that, that, that has fun in the locker room, that, that the players respect because of his talent in skating, and he's just a great guy to watch. Both my parents went to Wisconsin, uh, Madison, and uh, I've just, I grew up kind of around the University of Minnesota and I loved the whole Big Ten atmosphere. I think that was unbelievable. The football, you know, I think that coming to a school where 45,000 students, you got all these different athletes, I mean, there's just so much to do, so many people to meet. It was just so intriguing to me. And when I came here on my visit and saw how how unbelievable this place was and the energy that surrounded it. I, uh, there's just no other place that I visited that I could say had the same thing going on. Uh. I liked the idea that it was a Big Ten school. I mean, I went to Madison as well, and so um, I wanted that for him. I wanted him to go to a, a school with a kind of a big atmosphere, you know, where there were other sports, not just, you know, hockey, but, you know, football and uh, a lot of things that he could experience. So, yeah, we were thrilled. Uh, and lastly, uh, the toughest one, uh, I gotta say thank you to my dad, um, who's no longer with us. Uh, he taught me everything I know, and I wouldn't be who I am or where I am right now without him. 
You know, I always grew up idolizing him. He played four years at University of Wisconsin, won a national championship there, and um, he was number 23, and I always looked up to that. And growing up, I would wear number 23 too as well. And then after, once I got into high school, it wasn't available, so I had to switch numbers, and I kind of bounced around numbers after that. But after he passed away, I just kind of thought about it, and I knew that 23 was available on our team, and it just, uh, I don't know, it just kind of hit me. It seemed like a no-brainer. I just kind of wanted to, you know, honor him, and. I play for him this season and I did not know he was going to do that. I actually found out uh, about that the day Jim died actually. Um, so it was quite emotional but yeah but fitting. It's a, a wonderful tribute to his dad. You know the, the amount of things he's done for me are endless and uh, even though our time together is uh, cut short, even though he's not here tonight, uh, I know he can hear me so I just want to close by saying that I love you and I miss you dad. You're watching uh, the best college hockey story, the Penn State hockey story. <laughs>
but they were running out of time. I'm Penn State, and you're watching the Tommy Olchek story. How do you divide the, the expectations of the fan base and the media and everything and kind of keep that from sneaking into the locker room? Yeah, well, it's the same philosophy we've had all year. We try very hard to make sure that we just focus on what's next and then really be where you're at, be in the present. And uh, I think the guys have done a really good job of that all year. And at this time of year, it is easy to get sucked into watching the scoreboard and watching the pairwise and, and trying to extrapolate in your head the, the, the implications but for us we just try very hard to keep on task on what we're, what's whatever comes next and uh, and really that's easy for us to say as a staff but I think it's really what's important what happens in the locker room and I think our leadership has done a great a great job all year and I'm sure that's uh, that's the way they approach this week as well the loss to Wisconsin will help grow the Lions desire to succeed to be the team they are meant to be the challenge authority, stereotypes, and all preconception about a new program. With a split in Wisconsin, they have left themselves some much needed wiggle room. With one weekend in the regular season remaining, they have set the table to do something special. Challenge for a tournament berth, a Big Ten championship, and the right to be called one of college hockey's premier programs. The only thing standing in their way, two games on the road, against the eighth-ranked team in the country, who just happens to be their biggest rival. The tale of our Lions to this point has been unpredictable, exciting, and captivating. Who could ask for anything less as they head to Ann Arbor?